I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to look at the projectile launcher gizmo. First thing we need to go into build mode, open up our menu, and go to our gizmos, projectile launcher, and it looks like this arrow thing, and this is the direction that the projectiles are going to launch. And if we open up the object panel, there's some settings that we can do. We can change the way the projectile looks. So we have a sphere, a rocket, a pistol, and a grenade. We can change the speed at which it is launched at. We can adjust the player collision settings to no players, all players, or all players except for owner. We can adjust the object collisions to no objects, all objects, or all objects except for the launchers group. We can toggle static collisions on and off. A static collision would be a collision with an object, let's grab a shape here, and so this currently is a static object. If we were to set it to animated, it's now not static. With static collisions on, the projectile will collide with this. However, if I were to make a duplicate here and set this one animated and turn static collisions off, the projectile will not collide with this one but would collide with this one. Gravity affects the projectile that's coming out so currently it's set to zero so gravity will not affect it. You can turn this up to something like um, 9.81. 9.81 is basically earth gravity. Scale is the scale of, of the projectile. Trail length, the trail of the objects, kind of like the trail um, gizmo. So if I go into gizmos, the trail is basically this right here. So you, you kind of have like a trail effect on the end of the projectile. You can adjust the color. All right, so in order to get this thing to fire, I'm just going to create a quick script here. And it's going to fire it once every couple seconds. So we have a couple events that we can use for the projectile launcher. If we scroll down, we scroll down to projectile events. And we have when projectile hits player, when projectile hits interactive object, and when projectile hits static object. So hits a player, hits a static object, and hits something that's set to animated or set to interactive. Now if we go to actions and scroll down slightly, you'll see this launch projectile and launch projectile at speed. Now these two will actually fire, so I need to create a new event. We're gonna say when event is received, we're gonna call it fire. And then we will drop in launch projectile. And we will call fire from start. So send event to object, we're gonna say call fire to self. And then we're just gonna put it in a quick loop and we'll just call fire every five seconds, just to see what that looks like. And we're going to attach the script to our projectile launcher. And now you see it's firing every second. So currently we have it set to static collision. So if we were to turn this off, now that projectile is gonna go right through that object because this is a static object. And if I were to move this guy over here, it will collide with that object. Oh, I need to unselect it, there you go. Notice I have gravity, so let's turn, let's bring this guy up here so we can kind of see it. And you can see it's going down. Now if I have this at zero, it'll continue to go. You can do a negative, so let's say negative 9.81, and it'll go up. We have um, different projectile presets. We have rocket. It gives us a different trail effect. We have pistol, which is kind of the same as sphere, but if I were to slow this down really good here, let's bring that down, you can kind of, I'm gonna turn this gravity off. 
and then turn this to like point 0.1 and then you can really see so how different they look it's kind of more like a uh, instead of a sphere it kind of looks more like a half sphere and then the sphere itself is actual an actual sphere and then we can look at our rocket which actually looks like a cool rocket so this is what the rocket prefab looks like and then we can look at what the grenade looks like and it actually looks like a hand grenade which is pretty cool and you can see now that I have so many out one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 and then that one actually comes back over here so that's what the different prefabs look like we can turn the speed up so let's turn that back up to something like 10 um, player collision players except for the owner which uh, we're not setting the owner yet so even if if I were to do this now I could collide with these but it's too high Make sure it actually hit me Yeah, it hit me. We can adjust the scale. So say scale is one. We're gonna launch these big old grenades. You can see all of them kind of adjusted. So let's say scale 0 0.01, point 0.1, sorry. And then you can see we have our scale. And if I add a 10, it kind of stretches it out a little bit. And then you can change the color to say uh, let's go with red and see we've got purple or like a hot pink purplish pink and then red and then that'll adjust even the rocket has a has a redder hue to it if we go back into our script there was another action that we could do launch projectile at speed now this will allow us to launch the projectile faster or slower via script So right now they're being launched at 10. I can set it down to five and they're slowing down. Set it to one and even more. So this is a nice way to launch a projectile based on external factors. We can also set the gravity of the projectile. So currently it is at zero. And if I wanted to set it to 9.81, they will now drop like a rock because that's gravity. Currently in our script, we are launching our projectile every five seconds. Then we can detect when the projectile hits the player, when the projectile hits an inner, and when the projectile hits a static object. When projectile hits player, we get the player, we get the position, we get the normal, and we get whether it's a headshot or not. So let's put a debug in here. And I'm just going to throw in headshot. I have not been able to get this to work in edit mode. It works in published mode, but anytime I try to collide with the player's head in edit mode, nothing ever happens. We're gonna throw a debug for the position in the static, and then we're going to change the color. So let's go over to your set object color of object, I'm gonna stop it, and then play it. Then we have our launcher, it turns it red. And then let's go over here and we got our position and then I'm going to turn it around and we get right in front of it and it should print false yep but now now I'm going to try to get it to line up with my head and just just to see if it works and this looks like a good headshot right here. Bam. And it went right through me. So yeah, the head collisions do not work in edit mode. Oh, I'm gonna create a new script. Um, I'm just gonna call it script one for now. We're gonna throw a, I guess we could just throw it on, on our spawn point. It doesn't really matter. And script one, we are going to need a variable for we don't need that we need a new object variable we're going to call it launcher and 
and we're going to set our launcher to this guy. So we're going to open that, that, drag our projectile launcher into here. We're going to connect. So we're going to go to events. We're going to scroll all the way down to connect to event. And we need three of them. We're going to connect launcher. We're going to find the projectile hit player and we're going to connect that to when projectile hits player. We're going to connect interactive, so when projectile hit object to when projectile hit object. And then the, the static one is projectile hit world. And we're just going to connect those. You don't have to use these events. You can create your own and name it whatever, but they need to have these variables. I'm going to reset it. And then for each rocket that fires, we should get two on our on on here so we're going to clear it reset it and we did we got two so one is on the projectile launcher and one is on the spawn point now if i bring this over here so if i were to go in here and then just get rid of that for a quick second reset it it'll still turn it red so I can undo that. And then I want to rotate this guy and then just get in front of this rocket. And bam, I got hit. And we have two false, one on the projectile launcher, one on the spawn point. The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to basically create a gun with this. So I'm just going to make a very rudimentary gun and I'm going to group it and I can show you how that uh, other object works so I'm going to set these to none for now and then we're just going to group this go inside the group and make sure this is open exit the group and behavior interactive grabbable doesn't need to be physics attributes are fine physics are fine I always like using grab lock and grab anchor because this is where it'll grabbed if I didn't add this so we're just gonna put this guy right here and we can throw on per hand too just for because why not come on there we go, and we can have it grab over there or something. Now, so the rockets are going through that object. It's because all objects except for the launcher's group. Now, if I were to set this to all objects, you notice how the other one turned red. It's because the rocket is colliding with both of them because they're, yeah, see, it, it just stopped right there. Now if I set this to accept, now they're going to go right through both of those objects. And then I can I can grab the gun, I mean it doesn't really look like a gun, but it, it is for the sake of it being a gun, and bam, now I can, now I have a gun that's firing every five seconds. We could do another connect, but we're going to need object, call it gun. So this is the grouped object. We need to connect. We need a controller. So we're gonna do when trigger is pressed while object is grabbed. And then we're going to connect a gun to oh, index trigger down to index trigger down. And then when, what we're going to do is we're going to launch projectile. And we're going to see if that works. So we need to open our projectile launcher, which is already open, and drag our group here. And we're going to reset it. And I want to grab it. It'll fire 
when I pull the trigger. And notice how once I get to that, that 11th bullet, it takes the first one and respawns it. And that is pretty much it for the projectile launcher. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about this video, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for future videos, again, in the comment section below. If you liked or learned anything from this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified of all my future videos. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.